Born and raised in the suburbs, but a southern country heart, for sure. Yeah, oh man, I got a lot of gold Stack that bread and buy my nose Anything is possible All right. yeah. Yeah. Grind and get a lot of dough and Today I'm going to go out to the ranch And I thought I would take you with me This is a little bit of a spontaneous trip to the ranch I woke up and I was not feeling great at all And when I'm like that, I know that I actually do need to get into my body. I need to ask myself what I need for the day and I just need to nurture my soul. And I am a very, very big empath. So I find that when I spend a lot of time around people, I tend to absorb their energy. And when I go out to the ranch and I see Frodo and I spend time with these beautiful animals, I lose myself in it. and. It's like I get to recalibrate my whole nervous system. I get to rest and I get to also focus and be fully present in those moments because I am also looking out for another animal that is picking up on my cues and learning who I am. And in return, I'm learning who he is. And it's really interesting because when you give yourself the time to spend time around animals or just doing the things that really comfort your soul as best as I can describe it and give your nervous system a place to rest it is very easy for me to fall into these really isolative and negative spiraling thoughts and patterns and it's almost like this is my way of taming that in the most incredible way because animals really have this ability to speak to us and to mirror to us what we need to unlearn or uncover about ourselves especially when it comes to trust and building really healthy boundaries and picking up cues about your body language these horses can teach us so much about what we're processing when we're going through trauma how our body reacts instead of responds it is such an intimate connection that I get to share when I go out and spend time with Frodo. And sure, like I love, love the beach, but your horse girl is always gonna be like a Southern country girl. Born and raised in the suburbs, but a Southern country heart for sure. So I'm gonna take you to the stables. So Frodo is owned by Kerry and Kerry came into my life at the most beautiful time. I swear the heart horses find you when you need them the most. He's more than just a horse to me. Like he is this saving grace. He's taught me so much about safety and building trust slowly and just building a strong bond and connection. Frodo's my heart horse. I've never, I've never fallen in love with a pony before, but he is just so, so tiny. 14.2 hands high with a lot of personality. I swear this horse found me at my most heartbreaking um, time during this season. He's just taken a place of that for a moment and being like, you know what? I'm gonna take up this space where you're hurting. I'm gonna help you. So on the days where I do not wanna get out of bed because that is happening far too often these days, I always think about how Frodo needs me. And I'm like, okay, well, if Frodo needs me, I need to show up for Frodo and I've gotta take care of him and I want to continue to build trust and a relationship with him and that takes time and effort and consistency and so I think about Frodo and I get up for the day and I drive 120 on the highway four days a week and it's like this routine which refreshes my soul every single time. At the ranch we were saying when you come out on Sundays really early and you just spend time on the hills with the horse it's like church 
I speak to God a lot when I'm mucking out photo stalls. So, hey Jesus, I'm mucking out a pile of shit and I feel like talking to you. So, I thought I would start vlogging and taking you along to the stables with me because I, I just feel like I can make some really fun videos and while I'm learning and practicing all these new things. But the discipline which I want to focus on and really grow in and like Loki want to be the next Fallon Taylor. <sighs> I have been binge watching Fallon Taylor and she is incredible. So I've almost finished her unfiltered series that I mean I thought I was feeling sad and then I watched the unfiltered series and I was like sorry but Flo's story is just heartbreakingly beautiful and how she survived that colic treatment it looked so painful if you haven't watched Fallon Taylor's unfiltered series you should probably go and watch it because it's really good I haven't finished yet so we'll report back later and as I endeavor to study equine therapy I will be sharing all of the things that I am learning along the way. I did bring a book to read, which I'm gonna actually go and read when I get to the ranch after we've fitted the saddle. So this looked really great, so I had to buy it. It's like a textbook, I'm loving it. Equine therapy exposed. And I mean, this really got me. So Meg Kirby, let's see how you go. I can't wait to get this Western saddle because if this fits, then I get to turn it up a notch with Frodo and, and get our barrel racing techniques just fine i'm still learning his buttons we've got a long way to go we've had at least half a dozen rides now it's just like the easiest going pony and i have to keep reminding myself rochelle you're only 14 hands off the ground if you fall it ain't gonna hurt that much and you gotta get back on anyway no we're not falling it's not happening all right let's go see if this saddle fits hopefully it fits because then we'll get to get into barrel racing man i know how much you love it so we're gonna give him a groom get that pretty mane of yours all spunk and fly and then um we'll try the saddle on him and maybe give him a lunge if you feel like it hi what you doing you want to come out? All right, so this is the saddle that we have found and she's on the ranch here, which is awesome, but um, it's beautiful, it's brown, it's gonna look amazing on him. The seat is suede, the other seat on it was leather. Huh? Oh, I'm trying my best. This is beautiful. Want a massage? So we fitted his saddle today, but we didn't get it properly fitted. So we're going to get it properly fitted by V tomorrow and then we'll see how we go. The way that you sit in the saddle is really interesting. Kerry showed me you've got to come bring your pelvis all the way to the horn, all the way. And then you've got to sit, like lean in to the saddle, if that makes sense. And you've got to sit rather forward. So this is interesting. I'm buying a Western saddle like it's happening we're, we're looking we're fitting we're getting it sorted so yeah i really want to barrel race that's going to be fun the faster that you go when you barrel race the easier it is and i've got to get over my fear of going fast so i'm going to go home i'm going to set up all of my food for tomorrow um i'm going to cut up some fresh carrots and then 
yeah, maybe make some pasta ravioli. We'll see how we go. We have ravioli, we have garlic bread, and we have fat on table. I believe that to be true. Um, so I would whisper to her every single time before a run. All right, it is another ranch morning. We're going early morning, it's about 6 30. I'm having my dirty chai and then gonna pack all my stuff and we're gonna go out to the ranch and get there around eight o'clock. This is my first early morning at the ranch, which is so exciting because it's gonna be like so serene. There's gonna be morning fog. Oh, excited. It's gonna be a school trip a day, so we had to go out really early this morning. So um, we'll see if I ride Western. It would be nice to take it for a spin and see how it goes. And then the saddle will get fitted this afternoon. And so we'll be able to find out whether or not we can lock her in. All right, um, I'm gonna pack my bag, finish my chai, and then we're gonna get on the road. Top of the morning to you. The one thing that I am not enjoying about this horse girl life is that every single time I come home from the ranch, I have to clean everything. I can't wear it for a second time. Everything is so dirty. My Wranglers are disgusting. I just have to wash so much more. As Amanda Bynes would say, be a man, rub some dirt in it. This is so nice. I feel like no one is here at this time. and girls we're in action this smells glorious biscuit each are you hungry all right guys time for you back up back up back up back up thank you and this is where i start tracking my walk because we gotta muck out the stalls and it's some cardio. So having a horse is like 90% just doing all of the chores, mucking out stalls, grooming, getting them ready. All right, you've got your pooper scooper and then you've got the rake and I much prefer the rake. So this is gonna take me like 20 minutes to do more than half the paddock. I'll leave that end of the paddock for Kerry. And um, yeah, I'm gonna clean up the poop and this is when I usually talk to God. <laughs> pray and meditate while I'm cleaning his stall. You're a superstar. He's the best horse to photograph that I've ever seen. So, for example, if he wasn't to listen to me, what should I do? Instead of chasing after him, because where the shoulder is, that's called the drive line. So if I'm like this. Good. Yep, yeah, right lead. You've got it. You've got it. Good. Right lead. That's beautiful. Very nice. Oh, so relaxed. Heels down. Heels down, breathing. So I tried out the Western saddle. I am a mess right now. Um, it's very different to a stock saddle and I'm just, yeah, I'm slowly getting used to it. I do love that there is a horn, like when we eventually do barrels and we're steering around corners, that thing's gonna come in handy. But we went in the round yard and I was riding Frodo without any reins. And so I did a rise trot and can confirm, you can rise trot very well in a Western saddle. It's just, I don't know why all these American movies and American riders I watch, they just sit trot and it's looks so uncomfortable. So we were rise trotting without any reins. That was fine. And then I had to really build up my confidence to canter. And I don't know what it is, but like he's so tiny and I just still struggle to canter. And and sometimes when he's in a trot, he just gets really excited and he wants to go. And I'm like, slow down, buddy. I didn't ask you to canter. We're trotting still. But when we're in the round yard and I finally canted and I let go of the horn on the saddle 
and I just had my arms out and it was the most liberating feeling to ride without any reins and just obviously I trust Frodo because he's just going around in a circle and there's nowhere else he can go but it was just the most freeing and liberating feeling and I didn't get it on camera but I'm kind of glad that I didn't get it on camera because I was so present and the first time that I tried to let go of the horn, my whole body was tense and Jess was like, I can see you tensing up your body, you're falling forward, you just need to sit back and you need to relax your body and you just need to surrender and trust what Frodo is doing so, and use your legs. That's the most important thing. And riding without reins is going to teach you how to engage your legs and start getting the horse to listen to you by voice cues and just by your legs. Your reins should be the last thing that you're using to steer the horse. Frodo is very receptive to sounds. You can get him into a trot. And then when you, he'll go into a canter. And he is just the safest pony. And then when we went into the outside arena, I don't know why, I just got a little less confident. And Frodo could fully pick that up. I could feel him sensing that I was just, yeah, I was a bit nervy. So yeah, all in all, it was a good morning. And now we're gonna go home. I really need to catch up on some work. I'm going to put these in the wash, soak them, and yeah.